Hey guys, it's quote unquote your boy, Ballface eighty twenty, back again with another great commentary. So uh, in this video, I want to talk about something that was uh, brought up, I guess by a, by a commenter of mine, uh, Andy Cornholder, and uh, because I, I get he would apparently he had seen my uh, video. My, my, I think I think it might have been my last Casey video about like calming your mind, and I thought that I, I maybe I didn't. I thought that in the video <laughs> I encouraged people not to try to do the stuff that I said to to calm the mind. But uh, he he I guess was intrigued enough that he decided to try it for himself, and I really didn't think that that anybody would because uh, you know in my own experience, like I've tried to do it a few times. And uh, I always quit within 20 minutes. I'm not even sure I made it to 10 minutes. Um, doing, I'm talking about sense restraint as an as an idea as a, a means of calming the mind and therefore building up uh, focus or whatever. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's basically what I talked about in the video. So I wanted to respond to uh, Andy. I guess tried it out. And uh, it was the stuff that I talked about to calm the mind and build up focus. And then he was kind enough to give us his experience here. So I'd like to, you know, just talk about that. So Andy says here, well, I just tried the quote, do nothing thing after being inspired by this video. I did it for around 10 days, pretty much just sat in my room or my car and stared at the wall or out the window the whole time, avoided all music, internet, phone, and TV. Okay, great. He did exactly exactly what I want. He didn't say anything about avoiding reading. I'm assuming he did that too. He didn't like, but uh, you, you're supposed to not do that as well. If you're, if you're talking about like extreme sense restraint, uh, I did it in hopes I could gain some kind, some kind of new focus on boring or hard things that I wanted to learn before, but couldn't. Okay. Um, we can talk about that. It helped my focus somewhat after I tested it out on day eight onwards. Okay. But the boring and hard things I wanted to learn were still boring and hard. I became so used to doing nothing as a result that it almost became a detriment. A lot of the time I'd, I'd rather literally do nothing and just sit there than study the thing I was supposed to. Okay. Yes. Uh, although I didn't really achieve what I wanted, I think it was a useful experience. Maybe the problem is similar to what you said in your no fat video that you still need the underlying potential. And if you don't have it, doing no fap or even this doing nothing for a week isn't necessarily going to give you that potential. Yeah, um, I think that's a really good observation, but I, I'm not totally sure what he means there. Like if uh, um, when he says potential, is he talking about like, because uh, it sounds like what he was saying was, wasn't that he didn't have the ability to learn these things. It was that the motivation wasn't there. Um, and, and that, um, gets, uh, that reminds me, or I think the thing that thing, I thing I want to bring up here is there's this story, um, in Buddhism, I'm not really familiar with their, all their, what their texts are called, but in one of them, it's there. Uh, Buddha's got like a bunch of students that he says are arahants or whatever you call them. That means that they're enlightened. And some of his, uh, more novice students are going for go go to advice and this uh, to this one student who Buddha says is enlightened and he's always like a real dick to them about it like he gives the advice but he's a dick and they say you know they go to Buddha and they say Buddha you say that he's enlightened um, but whenever um, whenever we go to him for advice he's really rude how can that be you know, how can he be rude if he's enlightened? And Buddha says, basically, well, because he's a jerk, you know, <laughs> like, so, <laughs> you know, just because you're enlightened doesn't, I mean, you know, you, you, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean, I mean anything. Like if you were a jerk before you're, there's a good chance you're still going to be a jerk. You know, <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't really necessarily change you on that level. So if you're somebody whose problem and, and maybe Andy's problem isn't, so much that he can't focus on, like he's talked about things like programming or whatever he was trying to learn. Um, he wants to learn these things, but maybe his problem isn't so much that he can't focus and learn those things. It's that the motivation, he doesn't have the motivation to, to do it. And if, um, you know, calming the mind in his case might not be enough to give him that motivation because he could just be 
a relatively low motivation individual. That could just be the way he's wired. Um, you know, human beings are so complex that there's no way to know. There's certainly no way for me to tell, you know, <laughs> across the internet. I, I couldn't tell, but I mean, it is a real possibility. So that, that, that so that's true. Just like it's not going to make you um, any smarter or like make you pick the stuff up automatically. Um, I guess what I would say is if that's something that like, let, let's say you, you really do want to learn computer programming or whatever, and you've, you know, done this work that like that Andy has to still the mind or whatever. So that's improved your ability to focus. Uh, that, that seems to be what he's indicated here. Um, so, um, but the motivation not only hasn't gotten better, it's actually gotten worse. Well, you know, cause I'm the same way. I'm not a self starter at all. Like I could have all the focus in the world and it wouldn't change shit because I, I just, I just don't there. I'm just a low motivation individual. Um, always have been that way. So that doesn't necessarily mean though, that you can't learn things. That just means you're somebody who needs outside structure. And there's no shame in that. That's the reason. Why do you think, you know, professional athletes hire coaches? Do you think they really don't know <laughs> that they need to swim seven laps someday or whatever? That's not what it's about. It's because they need the, they need the structure, the self diso they, you know, they need the structure to make it work. And, um, Cause like, I mean, for anything, the information is out there, you know, it's like, it's all available on the internet and maybe that wasn't always the case, but you know, there's ways to find it. Um, so, uh, somebody like Andy, um, you know, like maybe what, you know, what he would need is, um, you know, if he wanted to learn programming is to take some kind of programming course. So he has that to you to, to maintain the level of focus, but go into a programming course. That way, the lack of motivation won't be an issue. Uh, that's a, you, you instead of instead of trying to get fix the lack of motivation, instead try to work around it. That would be my recommendation if you're trying to do this on a on a practical level. Um, I, I am a little surprised that. He said, like, it helped my focus somewhat after I tested it out. I, I would have expected it to have more of an impact. Um, the uh, So there are a couple other things that I would mention in regards to that. First of all, I, you know, I've said that, you know, my own attempts at sense restraint have not been effective. And um, that's true. I've never, like I said, I'm not sure I've ever made it past 10 minutes. Uh, I'm being serious. I know that sounds bad, but <laughs> just sitting there and doing nothing is is really hard um, when there's when there's things you can do to distract yourself. Um, but uh, but the thing is, there actually I'd for real I hadn't I'd forgotten about this when I made the video. There was one time where I actually had done it, um, although I wasn't doing it to try for any. I wasn't really thinking of it as sense restraint. I was thinking of it as cognitive rest because I had a concussion that I was struggling to recover from. And one of the main treatments for concussions is cognitive rest, which is you don't do anything. You like you, you let your brain rest is basically the idea. So, I mean, first of all, you can't exercise, so you can't use that to distract you either. But you don't read you don't, um, it's kind of like the stuff I said in the other video. You, you don't read, you don't watch TV. You're probably not supposed to like listen to anything, although I did. Um, and you try to minimize your social actions. In fact, the most extreme version of cognitive rest is very similar to some types of like, you know, meditation retreats where you actually isolate yourself in a dark room don't even talk to anybody, but just have like somebody in your home come and drop you food off three times a day. It's called the cocoon method. And you just sit there all day long. And um, now, uh, so I did mine for three days. I wasn't doing anything that extreme. I was still like, I was living in a house with, uh, I can't remember, f either three or four other guys. I don't remember. Um, and I, um, 
was certainly, you know, I mean, they like, I not, I not only did I interact with them, but although they weren't around during the day, because the reason we were all living together was because we were going to the same like computer school and um, which I couldn't attend obviously at this time because I had a concussion. Um, so I wasn't using the internet. I wasn't watching TV and I couldn't exercise. So I was just sitting there bored out of my mind. Um, I was doing some stuff to distract myself though. I was doing like laundry. Um, I was taking cold showers and ice baths to try to like, uh, to try to help with the concussion. I was, um, I was, uh, I definitely wasn't practicing no fap. And I was eating um, like junk, high pleasure junk foods, like as much as I could. Really, anything I could, to, you know, to keep myself distracted. Also, when my housemates got home at night, uh, one of them would watch, you know, TV, and I didn't actually watch it, but I would turn away from it and listen to it. So I wasn't doing pure cognitive rest, I guess, uh, or pure sense restraint. Um, one of the things with sense restraint is, you know, you're not supposed to really, because the idea is to not indulge in sensuality because sensuality, again, that's anything that interacts with your senses is um, going to disturb the natural tranquility of the mind. Not that there's anything wrong with sensuality. It's just a fact, like I mentioned in the other video. So, um, so to, to, to really do it properly you do have to, like, it's not enough to just not do nothing. Uh, you have to also not um, mentally indulge in sensuality, like fantasize about things that involve sensuality. And that's that's really hard when you're just sitting around doing nothing all day. I don't know if it would even be realistic to, to start that way at first. Uh, ideally, you would eventually get there. Um, certainly, you should avoid ill will, though, because that, that is doable. Uh, avoid, you know, just, I mean, you can't avoid ill will, but you know, again, avoid, um, I don't know what you call it, like dwelling in it. So like you're sitting there and you're doing nothing and you think about something that makes you angry. The idea is acknowledge it and put it to the side and go back to whatever and, as opposed to, you know, reveling in it and just, you know, either thinking about your revenge or thinking about how angry you are, stuff like that. Uh, again, it's not a moral thing. It's just about, you know, you know, the mind being stable. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, you know, my initial comments, but then I asked him ag again, uh, you know, I told him it was interesting and I asked if he noticed any other changes and here's what he said. I did notice other changes. My appetite went down a lot. I had already been eating at a deficit, but I started eating even less, maybe around 1400 calories a day. I think my mind became more calm, but at First, I confused it with tiredness. I don't know if you necessarily confused it. I think that um, often in these in these types of things, you'll see this at meditation retreats. Um, people will initially be more tired as their mind stills. They'll they'll you know kind of catch up on a sleep deficit because they maybe their mind was so so not at rest that they weren't sleeping as much as they should have been. So um, that often does happen at first. I noticed feeling more tempered and in, and sort of in a zone. I wasn't as frantic in situations where I normally was. Things seemed to be slowed down in general. Okay, that's, that's good stuff. I didn't intend to do no fat, but I also noticed I completely lost the urge to fat. That doesn't surprise me at all. Um, first of all, true sense restraint requires no fat. Um, but again, it's <laughs> that's difficult. I'm not surprised at all, though, that it just he, he lost the urge to fat. I, I've noticed that myself in times where, when I've done, um, when I've done sense restraint, he basically, what he said about the eating makes sense. You know, it's just like, um, if you think about it, you're on the computer or you're watching TV, you, for some reason that you're going to end up fapping and eating more. I don't, I don't totally know why it has something to do with the mind who cares, but, um, take that away and yeah, you won't, you won't, um, you, uh, the, the fapping and junk food or whatever, the, the urge just won't be as strong, at least not, you know, at least, you know, temporarily. Um, 
So before I was doing it three to four times daily. Uh, however, near day 10 onwards, the desire came back and my thoughts became obsessed with thinking about women. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, I think, I think that's just a physical thing. Like if you've gone, like, you know, if you're a young guy and you've gone 10 days <laughs> without fapping, uh, like the biology kind of takes over. So I don't even know what I would recommend in that situation. I, I guess I would say, um, I mean, it is an opportunity to try to practice some real sense of strength. But on the other hand, you know, it can't be about willpower in the long term. In the short term, you might be able to say, okay, this is an opportunity to learn from it. Just kind of, you know, let it pass because it will come and go. And, um, but I don't know, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, sustainable in the long term. I don't even know if it's healthy. So I really can't, I really can't comment on that. Um, <clears throat> eventually I caved in a couple days later because I hated thinking about it all the time. Yeah, I, I've been there. I know what he's talking about. Um, it did become less boring with time. Uh, the first two to three days were especially hard for me. Yeah, no shit. The, uh, that for the, <laughs> those, uh, I remember those three days of cognitive rest I did were like were torture. It was horrible. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how you get through those first three days. Uh, I had hoped the boredom would force me into productivity. Surely anything is better than doing nothing. And yet that didn't seem to play out like how I wanted to. Instead of learning programming or applying to jobs, I was okay with just staring at a tree all day wrapped up in my own head. And I am, I am interested in what you say about monks and apathy. I have never heard that before. Okay, because in a previous comment, I had mentioned that it's very common for monks. Uh, at least it's, I don't know how common it is, but I've seen studies that have mentioned monks I think in Sri Lanka in particular, that um, basically it was something like over 75% of the monks on any given monastery in, on, in um, Sri Lanka were clinically depressed. Um, and wasn't like clinically depressed as in they felt sad per se, but it was a depression as in they just had zero motivation <laughs> to do anything. And um, I, I think that's that's a real problem, and um, which is why I, I think these extreme forms of sense restraint really aren't appropriate for everybody. In fact, I think that even uh, Buddhism teaches that sense restraint isn't something you should dive into. It's something that you have to, you know, you have to develop the mind to a point first, and um, you know maybe some people never even get there. But uh, sense restraint is, uh, I mean, can have that effect, you know, have that effect where, you're, where it'll just create just, you know, pure apathy or pure loss of interest because nothing's, you, you haven't stimulated the mind. You, know, you haven't stimulated the mind good. So your mind is still in focus, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's happy or interested or engaged. It's just kind of like there. And um, maybe some Buddhists wrongly consider that a good thing. Uh, it's, cer it's certainly not. Um, but it makes sense, you know, as the mind, like, cause, because if you were going to, um, you know, cut out all distractions and then use uh, the restlessness, boredom of the mind to focus on productive things or focus on wholesome things or whatever, um, like learning, um, learning a language or a skill or whatever. Um, that's, that's one thing. But if instead you get to the point where you just train the mind to be okay with being bored, that's not a good thing for motivation. In fact, it's going to be negative for motivation. So it ends up kind of being a damned if you do damned if you don't. Um, because, and if you think about it, it's consistent with Buddhism teaches, because if you follow Buddhism to its logical conclusions, they would say that motivation kind of is a bad thing. They, they want, they, they actually want to get rid of motivation because you should just, you shouldn't, because motivation means you want to do something or whatever that's going to increase your happiness or make you happy. And Buddhism is all about just being happy with things as they are. Um, which is, uh, which is, I think is an unhealthy thing. And if everybody was like that, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now because computers and the internet wouldn't exist. 
people would just been would never have gotten past the hunter gatherer stage. <laughs> so, um, so there there is a, there is a, that problem there. So, um, yeah. So I, I guess. Um, Yeah, I, I don't know, because, you know, it's one thing for, like, for somebody like Casey, you can just say, you know, somebody like Casey, you could just say, cut out all the, um, cut out the TV, cut out the fapping, cut out the socialization, cut out the whatever. I mean, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that even to somebody like Casey, but you could say that, and then that person's focus would be improved, but they would be okay because they're so motivated anyway. Maybe they have a problem with focus, but there is no problem with motivation. Casey's got tons of motivation, but a lot of people, their problem really isn't focus. I mean, they, they might have a problem with focusing that's making things tough, but their biggest problem is probably motivation. And, um, so, and if you're struggling with low motivation already, is sense restraint going to make the motivation problem even worse? Um, I think it's a really good question. So maybe the Maybe um, instead you need to have a, uh, instead of just complete um, sense restraint like uh, Andy Cornholder did, maybe instead you should just cut out certain things that are disturbing the mind. Again, like I want to mention a big one is, and I'm not saying Andy's doing this, but would be um, indulging in ill will. Um, Like I said before, he probably doesn't have a problem with that, but that's, that's one thing that really does make a difference. I can tell you from personal experience, the mind it is more at peace if you just don't indulge in it. You're going to have feelings of ill will. It happens all the time, especially somebody like me who has to talk to a lot of obnoxious people on the phone. Um, for some reason, it's it's older white women uh, are the ones who I get really angry at. But the and there's nothing that's going to stop me from getting angry. But I can refuse to act out of it and refuse to mentally indulge in it. Um, and that helps. And uh, so that's one thing. Another is refusing to indulge in lust. Harder, um, especially like what Andy said, at around the 10-day mark. But I mean, you I mean you, you could, you, I mean, there are things you could do to stay away from it. And then uh, another is to avoid engaging in like passive forms of entertainment. Passive, like, and, and I would include video games as a passive form of entertainment. So you could still do something like play chess, for example, because that's one thing, but you wouldn't do something like play video games. Um, and you could still use the internet if it was for a specific research purpose, but you couldn't mindlessly search the web or watch YouTube videos mindlessly. And even then you would have to, you know, keep it um, reduced. And then you would need to set a time, set aside time each day to engage in pure sense restraint. Um, maybe you're not going to do it all day long, but at least an hour of where you're, you're going to just not do nothing. And maybe you can build up and do it where time permits, but don't have it be all the time. Like, you know, you still like, and the other times you engage in, you know, productive stuff uh, like, you know, like learning to program or, building your business or whatever. Um, that way, you know, you'll be motivated to do that shit because you won't have anything to do, um, but your mind will still be calmer. Uh, obviously, it's what I'm saying isn't ideal for like building a purely still mind, but a purely still mind might not actually be desirable. <laughs> um, a purely still mind requires minimum cognition, which isn't what human beings were designed to do. So, um, Maybe the issue isn't that we're stimulating our minds. The issue is that we're overstimulating our minds. And that's what we want to do. So we want to maybe find something a little bit more balanced than the traditional uh, Buddhist ideas. And, um, you know, maybe I should have, maybe I kind of went too far in one direction when I was in the, towards more towards the Buddhist direction uh, when I was responding to Casey in this video uh, above. This is the just stay in the present moment thing. Um, that's all for now. Thank you, Andy, for sharing. Uh, that's all for now, and I'll see you guys in the next.